Oh, here we go. All right, guys, it is National Pet Day. Wait, Portia, let me put my hood up. Portia's in the mood, so I'm protecting myself. I'm ready, Portia. No, not that way. What the heck? Why'd you go that way? She's offended by the hood. Oh, yes. So even though these adorable stinky critters are not traditional pets by any means, I have a home-based sanctuary. They are part of the fam. They're just part of the outdoor family. And so you guys probably see a lot of us rescuers preach, foxes do not make good pets. But I'm gonna go into the why, because I also don't wanna sound hypocritical. Although they're all rescues and I didn't go out seeking them, I still love them and I still love doing life with them. It is possible to successfully share your life with foxes. I'm a prime example here. I'm just gonna throw random stuff out in no particular order. So right now, I'm loving Portia. You're like, wow, I want to do that. I want to pet a fox. I want a fox to close its eyes because it loves getting scratched so much. Well, here's the thing. Affection is completely on a fox's term. It can change in literally like 0.2 seconds. She could go from loving this to just chomp on my hand. She could go weeks. I have foxes who go months without wanting any sort of affection. Or I have foxes that no matter how hard I've worked, they don't want any physical, ow, frick. That was a good timing though. They don't want any physical affection at all. Switching enclosures to feature a marshmallow in this video. Hey, you. Hello, and Tony too. Hello, kids. They stink. Any species of fox, I would say gray foxes might stink a little bit less, but foxes smell. And the closest thing I can describe it to is like a skunky, musty odor. Their body, their poop, their pee, they're stinky animals. And on top of that, kind of like piggybacking on that, they mark. Even if you can somehow, you're one of the people who can litter train a fox to, you know, say 80%, which is great, they will still pee and or poop on anything that they want to claim as theirs. You'll never be pee or poop free if you have a fox and you think you want it to live in the house. I have tried raising foxes in the house, but then when I try them outside in an enclosure, every single fox has always been happier being outdoors. And when I say stinky, I mean, it's really strong. It's really strong, isn't it, guys? One little turd hidden in your house. So walk in the door and somebody's like, somebody's smoking in here? It does kind of smell like that, that skunky smell, you know what I'm talking about? I have had people ask me that many times. Okay, another thing, they never do what you want them to do. For example, which this is probably me being dramatic right now, I fill their houses with straw, so they stay cozy and warm. All the straw always ends up out here and spread amongst the enclosure. They just, I would say three quarters of them just like the plastic of the house. And it drives me crazy because I want them to like their cushy straw. You smelling my rake? What else should we say, Cleo? Oh, legality. There's a lot of places that it is legal to own a fox. You have to go based on your state laws, then your county, and you get more local and local, you get the point. There's also a lot of places where it's illegal, but come on, let's be serious. If somebody wants to get their hands on something illegal, they can. There's lots of the equivalent of like backyard breeders of foxes out there in many states that you can get a baby fox for a couple hundred bucks. So people do it. They think nobody will find out but then somebody finds out and then the animal either gets confiscated, given to the wrong person or needs rescue placement or people get afraid that they're gonna get in trouble. And we have such an issue guys in the US. There's such a need for fox rescue, way more need than there is available placement in sanctuaries and rescues. And you have to remember, a lot of these animals are also super traumatized if they have to go through the whole rehoming process. Oh, rabies vaccination, that's another one I should bring up. Even though they're canines and we know that the rabies vaccine works, I've done blood tests where you can see the titer levels. That immunity is there. It's considered off-label use because it's not made for foxes. There hasn't been a test done on it for foxes, which would cost millions of dollars, and I don't even know everything that would have to go into it. So if your fox, like Marshmallow Cleo here, bites somebody and it gets reported to the health department or whatever, more than likely you are going to have to euthanize that fox because an animal has to be deceased in order to test its brain for rabies. It doesn't matter if it's vaccinated if, some, if it bites somebody. They change as they mature. You can have the snuggliest, sweetest, most sociable baby fox as a kit, and then it grows up, reaches sexual maturity, and then boom, it wants nothing to do with you. And sometimes that's just its adult personality. They're bickering over there because I just put a new pallet under two of their houses, and it's like game changer, new thing, right? Everybody's taking turns pooping on it, marking it as theirs. They are loud. <laughs> I don't mind it, I love it. It's funny if I have guests spend the night at my house because they're like, how do you sleep? with all that scary noise happening outside. It sounds like, like a horror movie and it's people are screaming and I'm like, oh, I don't even notice it, right? I'm like deaf to it now. You might not mind, but if you have close neighbors, there's a good chance they might mind. They're destructive. Cleo. Good man. They're destructive. As I'm cleaning cages right now, I'm scooping up this little 
rest in peace of this squeaker. If I give them toys, their mission is to like seek and destroy. They want to kill this toy and kill whatever squeaker. But imagine in a house, if you're trying to do this in your house, which is what most people probably think they're gonna do. She's a marshmallow on an angry mission. They do this in your house. They will try to dig through your drywall to see what brand new world is on the other side. Or you might get lucky. Once in a while, there's a fox who's not destructive. None of them are the same. Oh, I have another good one. I'm walking into Judy and Nui's enclosure, which made me think of this. Miss Judy here likes to sneak up behind me oftentimes and bite my squishy spots. Whether it's the back of the arm, my booty, my thighs. Those are her favorite. And she's just curious. Foxes are very expressive with their mouths, so that's how they show curiosity, happiness, whatever. So I can't overreact. You can do some level of training with like positive reinforcement, but that's about it. Foxes don't forget things. They are so, so intelligent and you can traumatize them. If I were to scream really loud every time Judy bit me, she'd be traumatized and she'd be like, I don't want to go near that freak. They make scary noises and it spooks me. Hmm, food aggression. On that note, that made me think of food aggression too. Again, you can do some level of training and desensitizing with food and with valued objects, but foxes are huge on food aggression and resource guarding. You might want to like train your dog to be able to reach right in its mouth while it's eating food. You might find a fox that you can do that with, but more than likely, you just gotta be prepared for you and everybody else to give them their space while they're eating, or if they have something that they really like, and especially if they kind of like shove their butt towards you, which is kind of their don't come near me and put my butt in between us sort of thing. The only times that I've gotten really, really badly bit by a fox, other than when I had to like capture one that was very unhappy and I didn't have enough safety handling stuff on, is if I was simply too close while they had an object that they were guarding. And I might not even realize it. I might just walk by and if I'm like a couple feet away, boom, I'm the target. And they latch and they latch hard. Right, Juju Bean? Now I'm in with the kids and Loki. There's Angel, Mystic, David just jumped down and Razzle who's shedding all his winter coat. Hi, handsome David. David bites. He always looks really nice, but he'll bite me really hard if I give him a hand. Hi, <laughs> hokey pokey Loki. They are still wild animals. Even though they are generations removed from a wild fox, the ones who are born here in captivity in the US, they all stem generations back from fur farm lineage. They're not domesticated. Yes, they're bred to be an animal that has to stay in captivity. They can't legally or morally be released into the wild. The problem is that that desire and that cool factor of working with these animals doesn't always come paired with the respect that they need. To sum all of this up, people who want a pet box think that they can get a pet box and make it fit in their lifestyle. If it's going to work, it has to be the other way around. You have to form to the fox. They are not domesticated enough like dogs where it can be the other way around where that dog will learn your lifestyle. And so yeah, it can be done. I'm sitting here talking to you guys and I have 30 foxes living in my backyard and I love it and I kind of didn't even mean to fall into this but it's my thing. It was a niche thing that I fell into and I clicked with. I understand their body language and their cues which is a huge thing too I didn't mention. That's what you have to be able to read all these very, very subtle cues, vocalizations, flick of an ear that some people might not have the eye or the sense to be able to see. What happens is people might be patient for a little while, maybe a year, maybe two years, and then they get sick of it. It's exhausting. And the thought of that being your life and committing to that for the next decade ends up wearing people out. And for whatever reason, they have to rehome them. And it happens. It's a reality. That's why places like me exist. And there's, I think, about a dozen of us other fox rescues in the U.S. More and more popping up, which is great. That is why foxes don't make great. Actually, they don't make good at all <laughs> to traditional pets. So in honor of National Pet Day, guys, I would love, love, love if you could take a couple minutes to consider supporting our collaborative fundraiser that we are doing with our friends at Walking Wild Rescue, who have over 100 foxes there. They're like four or five times the size that I am. Molly and David are amazing people. I love their ethics and how they take care of their animals. We have a big goal of $50,000. Both of us have big construction projects that need to happen. Mine is an addition on all of my primary fox enclosures. We had some really great momentum going with this fundraiser and it's kind of trickling off now, right Lulu? <laughs> so I'd love to keep that going. The hardest part is just getting people to take that extra minute to go and click the donate button. Seriously, three bucks, five bucks, anything would be really helpful. We just need more people to take the extra minute to go ahead and support us. So thank you, thank you, thank you if you could do that. I would love to see us hit $20,000 raised by the end of the weekend. Click the link in my Instagram or TikTok bio. Thank you guys so much to everybody who has donated or if you continue to donate, that's amazing. Richa, tell everybody to donate for you. Say donate in honor of me. Uh oh, I got the angry butt. It's cause of you, you made her have the angry butt.